kind of tough, but uh, we got it. And you know, and then you drop a couple of bolts in, get it started, and then you can start uh, putting back on your kind of peripheral type stuff. Like, um, let's see, maybe we can maybe I can get a little light down here and show you. Um, well, there's all this hosing and crap. Oh, there you go. You can maybe can see it right there. See that little. Um, that little black thing that says 60 on it, that's the starter. And that right there, we you know had to reinstall that. And that was the hole. Uh, when I showed you a video, well, that, well, there's a big hole right there in the transmission. Because you can see that bolt right up there, right to the top left of the 60. That's a transmission to engine bolt. And uh, just to the right of that bolt, there's actually a hole in the transmission case where the starter sticks through and engages the flywheel. So you throw that back. Um, let's see here. That sensor you see just to the left of the bolt is the uh, speed sensor. And it's also a convenient way to fill the transmission with transmission fluid. You remove that 10 millimeter bolt just to the top left of the sensor and then that allows you to pull the sensor out then you can throw in uh, your funnel right to that hole and assuming you have removed the uh, the plug the high fill plug which is that plug right there let me see if I can point at it for you this guy right there touching it right there sorry it went out of focus but it's right there you remove that well uh, that's the high fill mark, the high fill uh, plug. You know, there's another one down below that, just on the other side of the half shaft, which you can see right there. That that's and, and way lower too. That's the drain. You undo that to drain. Put it back in. Take out that one at the top that I just pointed at, and um, and then start pouring your, you know, put your funnel in there. Start pouring in your manual trans or your manual transmission fluid until, you wanna do this on a level surface too, by the way, uh, until that bolt down there that the camera does not want to focus on, the one that I pointed at just a touch just a second ago, until you see a little oil coming out of uh, that hole. And then uh, put the cap on that hole and blam, you're done. So, you know, and obviously put your, your uh, that sensor back in place. So, we did that. Uh, and then as far as here on the top, there's also a slave cylinder. Um, let's see here. If I can get a good focus on it. This black thing right here is, is this little rubber boot that covers your shift for it. That's what the throwout bearing is connected to that engages the pressure plate and has the pressure plate disengaged from the friction material. So this is a little hydraulic pump. And you know, it's, well, it's actually. Well, it's these slave cylinders. It's ran by a master pump, and uh, as far as I understand, uses the same hydraulic uh, fluid and pump as, say, your brakes would or, or the, any other hydraulic system in your car. I might be wrong there, but anyway, that's a hydraulic pump that moves that shift fork back and forth, allowing you to uh, disengage the clutch. So. You throw that that thing back on, and you you know you put your boot back on your shift fork. Um, let's see here, and also what's was pretty cool is that when I had the transmission off, and uh, you know your clutch kit comes with a new throwout bearing, and uh, so I was just going to replace the new throwout bearing, and I spun the old bearing, spun, you know, spun it around to see if it uh, was what you call spun, which means that the grease inside it is dried out. So when you spin it, it spins real freely. You know, it makes this noise you can hear of ball bearings spinning inside it. It just spins really easily. Um, and mine did that. And it actually should feel like, uh, you know, the, well, I guess I'll look at you. It should feel like the, uh, the bearing it has honey in it or, you know, or sticky grease. So it should spin really kind of slowly with a good amount of friction. And uh, doing, you know, it should have a real nice, like you're pushing something heavy in there, you know? But it should move nice and smooth. And, uh, and mine, like I said, just kind of, you spin it and it whirl around, you know, you could hear it. It's been so fast because that grease was dry. And so the way this 
showed up was when I drove it, it sounded like my car had a turbo. So it's kind of cool, actually, and I had no clue what the hell it was. But, uh, you know, it would... I mean, I guess even when the throwout bearings disengaged, it, you know, uh, since it's setting on the uh, input shaft, even though it's not splined to it or anything, I guess maybe the, the, the friction of the oil between the throwout bearing and the shaft causes the throwout bearing to spin. So you can hear it spinning, and, uh, and it made a crazy noise, you know, and it sounded just like a turbo kind of, and I really liked it, actually. So I threw this new one on there, and now my turbo's gone. So, uh, you know, it's kind of sad. So anyway, I uh, put in the throwout bearing, slap it on, um, and, and then underneath, as far as what you need to do underneath, um, you have to, there's an inner flywheel cover, um, Let's see if we can see anything of that. Hold on. Maybe we can see something, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Um. Yeah, you can't see shit. I'm at the wrong angle, really. Too much stuff in the way. So, anyway, there's a, an inner and outer uh, clutch cover. And uh, inner and outer clutch cover that, inner and outer flywheel cover that you need to uh, put back then um, you know obviously there's three or four motor mounts you need to put back into place you need to do that before you put the flywheel covers back on because you're going to have a, a jack under the motor holding the motor up since there's only like one mount holding it at this point so you know put your motor mounts back and then you know get the jack off your engine then uh throw the uh inner and outer flywheel covers back on put the exhaust piece back on that you probably had to remove and um, that's probably pretty good on the bottom and I showed you on the top you know you need to put the slave cylinder back Oops, sorry put the slave cylinder back and uh, starter you know whatnot and then you need to put your air box and all that stuff back and the thing I actually did skip over is you need to reassemble uh, your ball joint and you need to, uh, you know, actually put your CV or your half shafts back in, which can be kind of painful. The last inch or two you have, really have to pop it to get it over this little C C clip thing on the end. You have to really smack it in there, you know, not to, you know, be careful with it. Uh, read about that, and then you uh, throw your wheels back on, and. Uh, you know in the brake assembly you know anyway you, you you know read read the internet read the book um sorry i couldn't have shown you more uh she does run well now and uh it was uh pretty cool so there you go uh my 96 honda that my camera okay sorry about that here's uh <laughs> and here it is the uh, 96 honda and it's good to go. I got it jacked up just to show you a little bit. And I'm gonna get under there and actually do an oil change and a couple other things um, while I'm there. So uh, I hope that video helps somebody uh, or it was at least slightly entertaining. I can't imagine that, but maybe it'll help you change your clutch. And uh, if you have any good tips or uh, wanna flame me for shit that I did wrong, please feel, feel to do so in the comment area. Love to get some feedback. And anyway, that's it. Cheers.